Hey everyone, Guy and Penny from Midwinter Minis here. In this episode of our Speed Painting Blackstone Fortress series, we'll be painting up the flamethrowing chainsaw missionary Pius Vaughan. And she's wearing sensible armour and hasn't got her boobs out! It's pretty rad actually. <laughs> and she's bald. I mean, basically, I'm in love with her. <laughs> Uh, in the last episode, we primed her black, following our little priming guide for the explorers. Again, I'll be using a timer to show you how quickly you can get this model game ready. So let's start it, and using some black paint to cover up any areas that the primer didn't quite touch. Once you're happy all the recesses and hard to reach spots are covered, crack out your brown paint and use it to paint her robes. Get it on nice and fast, and don't worry too much about being tidy, as we'll be able to fix it up later. Now, grab your pale flesh tone. For this series, we've been using Citadel's Zandri Dust. It masks off the black very effectively with just one coat, so we'll use that on the two areas of fire to lighten them up for later. We'll also use this colour to paint the little bone inset into the weapon, the pages of the book on her hip, her face, the parchment hanging between her legs, and the purity seals. And while I was painting this stage, I realised I'd left a huge smear of paint on the base. And lucky this happened at the start of the paint job and not the end, huh? Because of the weird design of Citadel's paint pots, it's very easy to get paint on your thumb as you push the lid up. Games Workshop, can you sort out your paint pots please? I actually asked my subscribers what they thought of Citadel paints, and only 9% of your customers are satisfied with your paints. 83% really don't like the pots. Please, please fix the lids? Please? Or just give us dropper bottles? Anyway, let's calm down a little bit. The next step is to use some of your grey paint to overbrush the debris we added to the base. Just gently trace the edge of your brush over the dirt and rocks, but don't try to paint the recesses. This model will end up pretty dark and dirty, so let's give it at least one point of vibrant colour by painting the fuel pipe that connects to her weapon with red. If you've got any brown or grey on her boots by mistake like me, grab your black paint now and quickly tidy them up. Now let's mix an off-white with a one-to-one -one mix of our white and pale flesh tone. Use this colour to paint the face, which should go on nicely over the previous colour. We'll also paint the book pages and the little bone inset into the weapon. What type of bone is it, Dr Penny? <laughs> a fake one. No. <laughs> Now, using the same paint we just mixed, grab your dry brush and use it to very sparingly pick out the raised texture on her arms. Uh, next, we'll use our gold paint to paint her spiky halo, uh, the cover of her chain blade, and the fetish dangling between her legs. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? I'd like to keep her armour quite dark, so I mixed black with silver in a one-to-one -one ratio and used it to paint her cuirass, pauldron, gauntlet, and the tacit on her right thigh. This is like a, a video of listing strange words. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have extensive medieval armour knowledge. Of course you do. <laughs> Thanks to Google. Religious iconography. I also used it to paint the casing of her weapon. And now, just using our silver paint, thinned with a little water, we'll paint the valve on her fuel pipe, as well as the chain blades, the metal tube on her weapon, and the sensor and chain hanging at her leg. The incense dangle bangle, <laughs> as I like to call it. Dangle bangle. Uh, also, paint her mask and the fuel tanks with the silver too. Now we'll grab our grey paint again and overbrush the boots to give them a little variation and also paint the strap that goes around her book. For the final stage before we apply the washes, 
We'll use white to very lightly overbrush the debris on the base, just to pick out a couple of areas and bring out the contrast. So only 24 minutes of painting and we've already got our base colours down. The first wash we'll use is the brown wash, a super popular Agrax Earthshade by Citadel in this case. Apply this to the skin of her face, the gold halo, chain blade case and fetish, as well as all the robes and parchment as well as the fuel pipe. While you're waiting for that to dry, you can use your black paint to tidy up the base and its rims. As always, be careful to avoid any of the grey rubble you added. After this, you might want to take a little break and come back after 10 or 20 minutes and the brown wash should be fully dry. Now we'll use our black wash to glaze over the armour plates, chain blades, the weapon casing and flamer pipe, our eye sockets and the centre. Basically anywhere that's silver. Apart from her eyes. Her eyes aren't silver. Basically anywhere that's silver, and then her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're half an hour into our hands-on painting time, and it's starting to look pretty awesome actually, if I do say so myself. Uh, let's do something fun and paint the fire. So we're going to do a technique called wet blending, which might sound a bit intimidating, but you used to do it when you were a finger painting toddler, so it's really not that scary. The paints you'll need for this step are white, yellow, red and black. To show you more clearly what to do, I've swapped out my dirty palette for this clean bit of glossy cardboard. So put a drop of each paint onto the palette, first white, then yellow, then red, then black, with a little space in between. With your brush, blend a patch in between the white and yellow while leaving some of the original colours untouched. Wipe away excess paint and then wash your brush. Then do the same thing with the yellow and red to create an orange and then repeat this process until you've got a nice mix of fiery colours that you can draw from. Start by painting the whole flame white, starting at the base of the flame and working towards the tips. Now take some paint from further along your fire palette, somewhere in the yellowy area. Again, paint from low down on the flame to high up, but this time leave a little white still showing. Carry on this process until you've got a nice transition from white through to fiery red to smoky brown and finally just to black at the tips of the flames. Fire is great for practicing this technique of blending wet paints. Fire isn't exact and you can stop when you're satisfied. If you hate it, you can always just try again without obscuring important details. If you need to add more yellow or red, as these colours can easily become desaturated by the white and the black, feel free. There aren't really any rules, just have fun. So after six minutes of building up the flames, we've got some awesome looking fire. And at this point, you could definitely say the speed paint was over. But as always, I'll show you a few more easy steps to bring out some of the details. Mix brown with your pale flesh colour in a one-to-one -one mix, thin with a touch of water, and use your detail brush to create streaks on her robes. Avoid the recesses and try to focus on the tops of the ripples and folds. Once you're happy with that, mix white with pale flesh tone in the same way and use the off-white colour again to highlight areas of her face and the tiny bone on her weapon. You can also use delicate streaks to highlight the pages of her book, as well as the parchment and the purity seals. If you want to make the red pipe pop a little more, mix red and yellow in equal parts and pick out the top facing surface. You can also use this colour to add a bit of warm mid-tone back into your fire if you feel that it's a little washed out. Next we'll use our silver paint to catch the little decorative corners of a book as well as the clasp. You can use your detail brush to pick out little scratches and patches on the metallic parts too, like the flamer pipe. 
You can also add a little line of silver along one edge of the little nicks on the gold case of the flamer. Now we'll mix our dark silver paint again using black and silver in a one-to-one -one mix and use it to catch raised or rubbed areas of the armour plates. We're not really edge highlighting, but just using our detail brush to catch parts you think might have seen hits, scrapes or knocks. Finally, we'll apply one more layer of brown wash to a face to balance out the highlights we added. And after that's all dry, Pius is done! And before we show you the model, just a quick shout out to Jonas, Zoltan, Laurier, Romero, Jeremy, Tony and Conrad for being our heroes this week and supporting the channel. We really appreciate your donations, thank you so much! So, in only 49 minutes we have another Blackstone Fortress Explorer painted up and ready for action. In the next episode of our Blackstone Fortress series, we'll be painting the friendly, helpful, not suspicious at all, Imperial robot UR025. We'll see you then! Bye for now! Bye!